Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Faith and My Resistance to Faith Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Faith and My Resistance to Faith. Recorded on the 8th of March, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. <laughs> All right, let's make a start, shall we? So the title of this session is, uh, it's just a half an hour question and answer this one, and then we'll go on to the truth Q&A. But this Q&A will be specifically about faith and related issues, so... It's uh, Facing My Resistance to Faith Q&A. So, far away, my dear brothers and sisters. Half an hour to ask about faith. Like, when it needs really is probably a month worth of questions. <laughs> if we start with David down in front, please. I can find a little... If we've had all this sort of negative experience with uh, faith and trust why do we then put our faith and trust in a blind man why don't we not everyone does but you know instead of using sort of logic in the situation we then like, like with that illustration and yeah all the questions it's a good know, it's a good question in them yeah it's a good question and um, the reality is that from a very young age we are taught to trust in other people who don't know and if you think about it the primary people we're taught to trust firstly are our parents and and we become reliant and trusting our parents but a lot of things our parents don't know and and it, it'd be great if they admitted they don't know but unfortunately many parents can't even admit that so so we have a tendency because of their self-belief systems to put trust in them even when you know they don't even know although oftentimes believing they do um, so that, that's our first issue. The second issue I feel with regard to faith is that, is that we don't know what else to have faith in because our parents don't have any faith in anything else other than themselves. And so after a while we learn through their behaviour that we can only either have faith in them and after a while, as we've talk, discussed, frequently when it comes to emotions and spirituality, we're disappointed in that regard. So... so after a while we learn to only have faith in ourselves so this is what happens is we develop a, a large degree of self-reliance as a result and um, once we've got self-reliance and and also once we've trusted other people who don't know we are already predisposed to trusting people who have no idea what they're talking about and as long as they seem they know what, uh, to know what they talk about that's all we rely upon so we rely upon the facade they present and if you think about it this is what we frequently do in our childhood with our parents too the, our parents present a facade of knowing frequently when they really would be better off just saying look son i don't know you know the answer to that question i've got no idea um unfortunately most parents are not humble enough to do that and so they present a facade that they know so, so if they asked whether god exists they'll either say no god doesn't exist or yes god does exist rather than saying i, I really don't know son and i really don't know how to work it out <laughs> right and um, because admitting that to themselves causes a whole heap of emotional issues to be raised inside the parent themselves so what they do instead is present a facade to the child that they do know when they don't and this causes us to learn to have faith in people who present a facade. So we finish up having faith in a person who seems like they know, rather than a person who actually demonstrates through their life that they know. Yep. And this is why frequently teachers on the planet have their personal lives are still a mess, but but they come across positive and you know upbeat and everything else feeding the addictions as well and so we'll put our trust in those particular teachers rather than a person who who you know is not feeding our addictions who's confronting us all the time and so forth and and these are there's many emotional reasons why actually we would do what what you say but it's true that's exactly what we do we put our faith 
in people that don't know it, and we'll do that before we put our faith in people who do even sometimes it's, uh, it's quite strange really we're not very logical really and they've found in the study of the brain actually David that that there are certain emotional responses that get triggered which cause our brain to have a, a response um, that's a bit like eating chocolate or, or other substances like that you know having coffee or chocolate uh, for the majority of people and that is it causes the brain to respond in such a way that that all we're interested in is the way our our physical and physiological responses respond to a person rather than actually hearing what they're saying so that's another reason why we also have a tendency to only hear people who are feeding addiction feeding what we want to believe rather than confronting us yeah. trusting the warm and fuzzies instead of you know the actual information coming in exactly yeah and actually we're taught to give warm and fuzzies as you call them uh to others aren't we we're, we're really taught from a young age that that's the way to interact i give you a warm and fuzzy you give me a warm and fuzzy everything's cool and if it's a woman it's like if it's a man and woman oftentimes you've you got to give me a sexual warm and fuzzy as well <laughs> and and vice versa and then everything's fine between us type of thing and the, and that becomes what we're addicted to receiving and we don't really care about the substance about what's actually being said and the logic of what's being said mm. strange eh thank you yeah they've done a lot of actually there's a lot of studies that are being do done at the moment about the brain and the response uh, a lot of it is taken from a physical perspective of course but there's a lot of responses about the, you know the triggering of emotion how it affects the brain how it affects your response to hearing any truth and so forth and all of those experiments would be are very fascinating to discuss with you but but we don't have time to discuss them obviously in in our presentation paul thanks <coughs> um learning to feel um in, in the way feel your own feelings and feel feelings from god and others it seems is a big part in this and i remember you saying that you developed that as a young age mm -hmm. um so is that that's a question or a statement <laughs> yeah, yeah well <laughs> i guess it, it's it's just a statement yeah yeah no it is it is true that it's very uh, important the emotional part of this is very important and and in fact faith itself is an emotional state having faith is an emotional state just as really being in truth is an emotional state not just an intellectual one and and taking action actually comes from your emotions too as you'll learn in a minute so so yeah everything is based around your emotional state remember unless the emotional state changes then it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to receive truth from god and remember truth from god is god's emotions about a thing it's actually how god feels about a thing not how god thinks about a thing so that's very interesting in itself so, so if you ask god for truth about how you've treated your you know your wife and um, god will tell you how god feels about the thing not how god thinks about the thing right and this is remember um in the channeling with um the guy who uh, i brought this up with you already but the channeling with the guy who was the australian uh, farmer and remember i asked him to let himself feel what god feels about how he treated his wife and it, it, just terrible emotions came over him straight away that they're, they're god's feelings about that particular thing that's why he, he shut them down you see didn't want to feel them because they felt too bad right. interesting huh that's how god shares truth um so alex thanks hey that that last point what, yeah i thought god only ever gave you good feelings or love or what he lets you know exactly how he feels about a certain thing yeah really yeah his feelings are always loving i thought that was your emotions coming up of like oh, i was going to confront your emotions certainly so he lets you know how he feels about the thing and and the difference between his emotions and your emotions about the same thing will cause a major trigger you see for for the for the guy the farmer his feelings about how he treated his wife is i treated my wife fine nothing wrong with it 
So what God does is shares all this emotional truth about what damage it caused to his wife, how, ma how bad it made her feel, how bad it, how, how, what damage it causes to his own soul, how bad, it's make, how bad his own soul feels as a result of that damage, and so forth. But, but it's not a disapproving... No, no, it's not a judgmental. Oh, that was shocking what you did. No, it's just a statement of truth about all the damage that has occurred. But it's emotional, because all the damage is emotional. Mm. You see? So you get to feel what's really going on. That's why most of you don't want to have the connection, because you don't want to feel how God feels about things. Right? Yeah. It's because it's gonna it's gonna be overwhelming, man. <laughs> For the majority of it is overwhelming. If you if you hear about how God feels about one of the things you've done, it would trigger you if you were open, it trigger in repentance pretty much straight away. If you're closed, you'll just want to shut it down. You want to run away. Right, because it just feels too bad. Once you know how unloving behaviour actually feels, <laughs> you won't engage it anymore. You you won't let you won't even let it happen. You know, you you can't because it just feels real bad. Yeah, at the moment, unloving behaviour to you feels relatively good. Like feeding an addiction feels relatively good. There's going to come a time in your in your progression where feeding an addiction feels so bad for you that you will not do it again. You just won't, because it just feels so bad. And when you can feel God's feelings about it, you go, yeah, that's real bad. I'm not going to feel that. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do that anymore. You see, it's very important to be sensitive emotionally. Yeah. God communicates through these feelings, which is wonderful. Paul, you've got... Um, so to awaken to the sin to that degree where we want to feel God's feelings on it... Yeah, we're a bit off topic though, aren't we? Because we're on the topic of faith. Can we, can we get back to that? Yep. We'll talk about this stuff when we talk about the emotions tomorrow. All right? Because we are talking about emotions tomorrow. Jada, thanks. Um, after I watched like one of your talks... Should just hold it up? A what, more. After watching like one of your talks or something or listening to it, I often feel like quite inspired and... Yep. Um, and I just find, is, it, is that the faith? Is that faith coming in there? No. I'm, no? What is no. that? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, That's inspiration. I'm not, not, I'm not act, yeah, okay. And I'm not acting on it. No. And is, so that, is that why it's not building the faith? Yeah, you're relying on inspiration from another person to guide your actions. Many of you are doing this, actually. I, I need to discuss the difference between that and faith, right? So, so yes, what, you, what many of you are doing is you are being inspired by external sources to do something. Now, inspiration can be, unfortunately, evil, being out of harmony with love purposefully, or good, right? And so this is why how many of you get inspired evilly too to do something and many of you get inspired good in fact there's usually a mixture of inspiration that occurs inspiration comes from external sources so the external source could be someone like myself that you see in the physical or it can be someone in the spirit now many of you are getting inspired by the world as well what you say in telly what's presented to you through adver advertisements and so forth and how the world generally acts how your family acts you're getting inspired in that regard but you're also getting inspired through spirits so spirits you know connect with certain things they want you to do and they inspire you to do them whether those things are good or evil depends upon your use of your will Right. So inspiration, inspiration in the while it's good to be inspired, right? And, and when I say good, uh, this is a fact of life. Inspiration is a fact of life, right? You will, you are going to get influenced by all sorts of people in your life. Just the fact that you've got ears meant that means that God intended that you are able to be influenced by people saying something to you. The fact that you have taste buds means that God intended. To be for you to be influenced by the things you taste, right? Obviously, if they're bitter or sour, you know, chuck <laughs> that out. Um, and if they if they you know not bitter or sour, then you know they're not they're safe to eat and so forth. So God's created all these safety features, but but at the end of the day, you, you God created you to be inspired from other people. So so many of you are afraid 
of hearing other people, what they have to say and what they're suggesting to you and so forth. Uh, I don't think that's a problem. The problem is what you do with it, you follow? And, and yes, many of you are getting inspired and then do nothing with it. Well, I mean for good, getting inspired for good and then do nothing with it. And that is, that is a problem. That, that, is, that, is, that is a demonstration of the lack of faith, a lack of desire for truth, a lack of desire. It's actually a demonstration of the lack of will to love. The personal development of the will is not developed. So what generally happens for the majority of people is their will is so undeveloped that almost all of their life is governed by inspiration from others, whether it be for evil or good. So unfortunately... For many of you, that's the case. You're carrying around a bunch of spirits inspiring you to do things, carrying around people, you know, past experiences, not releasing those. They inspire you to do things too. So that's different than what I would call aspiration, right? which comes from within oneself. That's the thing that needs to be developed for good. You follow? That's the thing. Aspiration comes from within you. That's, that's an exercise of your will. This is, inspiration is an exercise of my will or someone else's will to influence you. So at this moment, you being present here, I'm influencing you, right? Uh, that's unavoidable. You're present, I'm talking, you're going to get influenced somehow. right? You can choose to listen to the good and get rid of the evil, that's your choice, that's the use of your will. But in terms of aspiration, that comes within you, what you choose to do, the exercise of your will. right? And this is where I feel many of you have very few aspirations and mostly rely on inspiration. right? And really that needs to change. You need to rely on aspiration, what's coming from the development of your own will, and rely less on inspiration, what comes from the will of others. And what I'm trying to do is inspire you <laughs> to do that. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to inspire you to give up this addiction to inspiration, because a lot of time it is an addiction, it's a reliance on others, right? Give up the addiction to inspiration and instead have the aspiration to love. Develop within yourself the desire within yourself to love. Now, you're going to need to firstly have some faith that love is possible, that, that, that you can develop your aspiration to love, that you can do it inside of yourself. And what we're trying to do in this course this week is we're trying to help you see that a lot of your progress depends completely upon the exercise of your will. Completely. Even the faith you have is dependent upon the exercise of your will. The amount of truth you want to hear is dependent upon your will. It's not dependent upon many of the things you thought it was, like you know, childhood events or any of those things. Those things happen to you, but they do not determine now how you exercise your will. How you exercise your will comes from your aspiration to exercise your will to love. You follow? So very important to understand that many of you are being inspired, either negatively or positively, but, but that needs to change to be your personal desire to do positive or negative. Right? You need to own your personal desire. Own your personal desire to do the negative and own your, develop your personal desire to do the positive. You follow me? And, and this is what is needed for you to actually progress. So, so inspiration can be good and it can be bad. It just depends on who it comes from. Yep. So God's always trying to inspire you positively, right? but, but most of us, as we've discussed, are blocked to God, so we're not feeling the inspiration. Someone like myself comes along and tries to inspire you positively, but because you're blocked to positive inspiration, because of all the negative things, you, there's a tendency to block that, and also because of the lack of personal responsibility to develop an aspiration from within yourself. That's one reason why you're willing to come along and be inspired. But if I don't have a presentation for two years, all the inspiration gets lost and, and you just go ahead with your life as it was before. Yeah. And that's because of the lack of personal aspiration to actually engage the process. Yep, good question. Peter. Yep. Okay, come, come to Glenda. Thanks. 
It's not on faith, but you said any time. Uh, um, yeah, well, it's related to faith, the question you're going to ask. So. Okay, I was just wondering what your thoughts were or feelings were on hope. Yes, that's a good question. The previous group asked the same question, actually. So let's look at compare these two e emotions. Primary difference. Faith is always based on truth. It has to be actually true in order to have faith in it. So, for example, you guys have faith that you can fly. Why do you have faith so you can fly? Because the truth has been presented to you. People have discovered it. Other people discovered it. But they demonstrated this truth. They acted upon this truth. They built machines based on this truth and demonstrated those machines are safe. And as a result, you can trust your life in it now. There's the truth. You follow me? So faith is always based on truth. So it's always got a foundation of truth. Does hope always have that foundation? Definitely not. So the trouble with hope is that its foundation is variable. Right? You can hope for something and it not be true at all. Right? Most of us do this in our daily life. Like You hope you put the person you're with loves you. But later on they cheat on you, so they didn't love you. But, but you hope they do, but that's not the same as faith. Faith is based on the truth. Once, you, once that person has released the emotion that may cause them to cheat, then you know for certain they'll never cheat on you. But only then. And having, to me, having hope that something is true when there's no faith to back it up is a pointless exercise. Oh, I've, I've done that myself m many times in relationships. But, but it ends up in disaster and also a lot of unhappiness. It's like, it's like many of you do this with your parents. You hope your parents are going to treat you good the next time you see them. When 25 other times you've seen them, they haven't. Do you, do you see? Can you see how like, surely you'd be better off just accepting they haven't and, and releasing it emotionally, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would, of course. But, but we don't, because we're hoping for the next thing. So quite often hope, unfortunately, is based upon emotions we wish to avoid. Whereas frequently faith is based, well, faith is always based on feeling emotions. Isn't it? You got to feel emotions to have some faith. So, so they are very different beasts. Now, I'm not saying hope is always negative. I'm just saying it's variable. In other words, there are sometimes you can hope and it actually turns out, and there's other times you can hope and it doesn't turn out. Now, to me, uh, as a quality, I, I don't go much for qualities that are so inconsistent. Right? To me, you, you put your trust in a quality that's inconsistent, in the end, the results are going to be inconsistent. Right? You, put so, you, you put your trust in a quality that's consistent, based on truth, based on emotion, consistent, hope, variable. I've tried to avoid emotion most of the time when I have it. You know, I'm trying, I, I hope my partner's not going to cheat on me, but, but she flirts all the time. <laughs> so... <laughs> Highly likely she's going to at some point, right? But I hope she's not. And this is what we do with hope. We unfortunately base our life around hope, things that we hope, only to be disappointed later. And then we, say, then we go, oh, I, I couldn't trust them. I couldn't. Well, of course you couldn't trust them. Because trust only comes from truth. <laughs> truth being expressed. You can only trust the people who are truthful with you. You know that, don't you? If anybody lies to you, you can't trust them. You know that, don't you? Why do you keep trying to trust people who lie to you then? If you knew that, you wouldn't do that, right? It's because we're hoping that the next time they won't lie to us. We're hoping that some magical thing might happen in, inside of them. And, and the reality is the closer you get to God, you don't do that. You don't hope that some magical thing will happen inside of a person and that will cause them to do something good. You, you, you know 
that the only magical thing that can happen is they release the reason why they do something bad. That's the only thing that can really happen. So you may have some hope they do that, but relying on that hope is dangerous. So, so while I have some hope that all of you will go away from here with the aspiration to actually develop your will to love, hoping in that is a pointless hope because uh, many of you will not choose to do that. Right? Many of you have already made your choice to not do that. So it just depends on you. Now, now I hope that you change your mind, but it's your mind. I haven't got any influence over it aside from being able to inspire it somehow. Uh, you are the person that needs to do the work. So, so yeah, I, I feel faith and hope very different to each other, Glenda. And, and I actually feel that you can live a long life in hope and be severely disappointed. Whereas when you live a long life in faith, you are never disappointed because you always feel the truth of things. So, so for example, if I, if I feel in someone there's a predisposition to anger un, in a certain circumstance, I don't hope that they don't demonstrate that anger. I, I know that sooner or later they're going to, given the circumstance. Does that make sense? So my, my faith is they are going to act unlovingly. They are, given the circumstance because of the emotions in them. And while that emotion is there, it's... Now, I have hope that they let the emotion out, but, but I can't guarantee they will, because that's the exercise of their will, their own aspiration to do so. A lot of times I can feel the aspiration too, and it's not there. So, so if a person doesn't have the aspiration, and you know that they're going to get triggered under certain circumstances, <laughs> they're like... I. Like, honestly, I can predict events way before they happen. Way before they happen. You will be able to too. Way before they happen. If you can feel everyone's emotion, you can feel their aspiration, the inspiration, what they're changed by, you can feel the emotions in them that they're unwilling to release, you'll know exactly what they're going to do. It's very predictable. Yeah. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, I think it's great. Because it means that I don't trust people. Most of you I don't trust at all, right? And I can't. Because you've not released the emotions which would cause me to trust you. I can't trust you. Because you've demonstrated that you're untrustworthy. <laughs> Many times, in fact. Right? With the amount of barrages of projections I get from different ones. Many times you've not only demonstrated you're untrustworthy, but you're willing to harm me. Right? So, so I don't come to an event like this hoping that all of you love me. <laughs> I have faith, knowing the truth of the condition. What's I know for certain what's going to happen. Some of you will respond, some of you will not. Some of you will project at me, some of you won't. I know which ones of you will and which ones won't. But, it's, but I don't have any investment in what you do. I'm not doing this because you're going to treat me good or bad. I'm doing this because I want to inspire you. That's my desire being excellent. If, if I have my aspiration, your inspiration won't affect me. Uh, that's the beauty of having an aspiration that comes from within your own heart. Your own will to love drives you then and nothing much else drives you, which is fantastic. Because it means that you're not influenced negatively. So these two qualities, yep, good question. And uh, you can see they're very, very different to each other. Yeah. So in the Bible it says... Uh, faith, hope and love are the three most important things. Um, I, I don't agree with that statement. Faith, hope and love are not the three most important things. Faith, hope and truth are the three most important things that you can personally aspire to within oneself. Faith, sorry, faith, love and truth. <laughs> faith, love and truth are the three most important things. Yeah. All right, so... This is a, I feel you know there are some things in the Bible that while they sound quite poetic and everything else, you know once you analyze them, you can see that there are logical reasons why hope itself is not always the advisable thing to develop, and it's particularly not the advisable thing to develop trusting your life in it. Whereas with faith, you can definitely trust your life in it. Truth, you can trust your life in it. You do every day. 
and love, I feel you can trust your life in it, even though most of you feel that you can't. Right? These are the things you can trust your life in, whereas hope, it's not one of those things. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Thanks, Monique. <coughs> Yeah, I just I just want to ask a question about that diagram that you had about faith, truth, and emotions, um, because I feel very resistive to the previous talk about God's truth, mm -hmm. res accepting truth. So, uh, can can faith? Uh, I'm just wondering about the sequence. Can faith be built without truth? No, and I have to feel emotions. So it must go in that order. They all go hand in hand to a degree. If you think about it, love is an emotion, is it not? Yeah. Right? Now, faith and if, if love and truth are joined at the hip, that tells me that truth has to be also felt emotionally, does it not? Yes, that's right. So if truth and love are both emotions and have to be felt emotionally, obviously processing through or working through my emotions is going to become critical in my progress. Can you see? Yeah. So yeah. if I build, if I, is, is it almost like hand in hand? If I feel my emotion about an untruth and error, that the truth can enter me and that will build faith? Uh, no, faith, faith, it, it will release your blockages to faith, but it might not build faith. To build faith, you must take some positive action to build faith. Do you understand? Right. This is why the four of the things we're discussing with you these two days are essential to work together with. Remember, the, the faith, truth, action and emotion, they are essential parts of your progression. If you choose to ignore one of them, you will not progress. You need to embrace them all, embrace each one of those particular qualities. And so then you're saying that they all work together you need to be doing all together those yep. four all together and in fact it's impossible to do them all apart you you can't have love without taking action because love motivates your action you can't receive the truth without changing love mo uh, truth motivates you to action you see so that they all they all have to occur together. You can't receive truth without feeling some emotion, both in the sense of letting go of the negative thing that precludes the truth, but also accepting the truth emotionally from, from God about a certain subject. So you have to feel emotion. These four things are essential together. You can't pick one of them and go, oh, I'm going to work on that. Yeah, and so when, or when you try and do take an action in truth without feeling emotion... It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Is no. It? Or any of those things without... And I'd say, I'd yeah. personally say that's impossible to take an action without feeling an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Every action you take is driven by emotion generally. Even the desire to use your willpower is driven by an emotion. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emotion to avoid the soul-based feeling. So there's an emotion of denial that's driving you to act in willpower. So everything you do is driven by emotion. So, so the reality is these four things need to go hand in hand if you're going to progress. That's why we're discussing them all together in two days, you know. Yep. It's good. All right. Well, it sounds like we've exhausted the faith issue, have we? Huh? Yep. Remember a few years ago, myself and Mary did a sort of interview thing at the front of an audience about faith. It was over two days. You remember that? My suggestion, go back to that uh, discussion as well, because it, it'll, it'll remind you a lot about the quality of faith. To me, faith, remember Solomon said, and there's a, a pageant message we discussed from Solomon, remember about faith too, and Solomon said, on the part of humans, faith is the most important thing. And that, that is definitely true. Because without faith, you won't be in, have an aspiration for truth. You've got to have some faith that having the truth is going to benefit your life. Does that make sense? Before you have a longing for truth. Truth will change your life. And truth changes your life more than anything else. 
right? Truth is the doorway to receiving love. So it changes your life more than anything else. Truth does. But unless you have some faith, you won't even believe that. You won't even have an aspiration to do that. So, so faith becomes your, the first Im important quality on the part of humans to develop. Now, as we've pointed out to you, you've developed it physically a lot. It's already a quality you know about from a physical perspective. You just haven't thought about it much. Right? What I'm suggesting is we need to have this same belief from an emotional perspective and spiritual perspective. That's what I'm suggesting. David. Is faith in God's goodness the like highest level of faith that we can look at? Because you can obviously have faith in a lot of different things. Is that where we're aspiring towards? Oh, I feel so. Yeah, faith in God Himself as as God being a good being, and and perfect. Yeah, definitely. And and in fact, that's why. Remember a couple of days ago, why we focused your attention on that issue in the in the discussion of how you feel about love, because because to me. If you, if you don't have faith in the source of all information, then obviously you're cutting, you, you know, you're cutting off the source of all information. Now, now you only have the option of discovering information through your own effort. And that, that can be a very exhausting process. I know people in the spirit world have been there for 100,000 years who still haven't discovered truth, much truth. You know, that from your perspective, they would have discovered, but from God's perspective, they've discovered very little, and, and they've had a huge personal effort doing so. So, you know, that's what we consign ourselves to do. Now, God's not saying to you, you can't do that, because you're allowed to. It's your will to do that. But I'm just saying there's a better way, a faster way. All of this other knowledge comes to you if you engage the source of, of the knowledge. If you don't engage the source of the knowledge, now you must discover it yourself if you're ever going to progress. And that process can be quite exhausting. Discovering it yourself rather than having help from God to discover it is, is an exhausting process. Now many of you will, uh, many, and many in history have done that process, so it's not like it's impossible to do. They just haven't discovered all of God's truth doing it, that's all. Because it's impossible to without God's assistance, and particularly without finding the way this emotional way that I'm trying to share with you. You know, if you do it all intellectually, you'll be limited in your discovery of truth. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. That's good. Okay, so, so that's our, our faith. And, and faith, you can see, very important quality to develop. And the thing we need to remember is that if we have a lack of faith, well, that's one thing. And there's all sorts of reasons why we have a lack of faith. And those reasons don't really even matter, do they, really? What matters is do we want to keep resisting having faith or not? And are we going to do something about it? That's the real question. Do you want to keep having no faith or do you want to try to develop some? What, what do you want to do? Now, my suggestion is that's going to depend upon your will, your, what you choose to do. It has nothing to do with what I share with you, right? The reality is I could be flying around in front of you and while it might improve some of your faith that it's possible, at the end of the day if I tell you that, that you, know, you have to process emotions and you have no faith in that, at the end of the day you won't do it. Huh? You'll try and find some other way to do it. And this is what I'm saying is it's just faith is such a wonderful quality, best to develop it as soon as you possibly can. It's best to not resist it anymore. Best to also see the lack of logic we have in applying it, you know, how we have all this faith in all these physical things and yet we don't believe all of those laws that we believe in in the physical also operate in the spiritual or in our emotional state. Yeah. 